Hello, hello. We're back again this week. We have been diving in and having some serious conversations coming out of my book, A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the Next Dimension. And so I am Tanika Maria, author, speaker, podcaster, and I help high achieving women get real, be healed, and move forward in wholeness, peace, and clarity. We want to operate wisely and we want to have our peace, right? Peace is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And this book, from my own journey and from what I have learned over the years, is chock full of wisdom and tools and strategies you need to walk in greater clarity, peace, and confidence. Because as you know, when your clarity and peace increases, your confidence increases, right? And so we have been going through the books, we're going through this book last week, and I'm going to dive right into it. Last week, we laid the foundation of facing truth, the good truth. And then we talked about the not so pretty truth, right? We face the good truth about our accomplishments, what God has done in us, the things we're grateful for. Then we face the ugly truth about some things about ourselves that we're still triggered and traumatized about, certain aspects of, of how we're showing up, how we spend our time. We looked at our calendars, we looked through our cell phones, we looked at our social media, and we really saw where the bulk of our time and energy went over this past year in 2022. And now we are going to look at some practical and concrete ways as to how we can really come up higher, right? And so we are starting off with chapter three, get real and be healed from unregulated emotions. And I start this chapter in my book. And again, grab your copy. It's on, on Amazon. You can click the link in my bio or click the link in the notes, depending on what platform you're in. And you can grab your own copy. So chapter three, get real and be healed from unregulated emotions. Let's dive into this a little bit here. Can't get my page together. Let's dive in. I love this quote and I start this chapter with, this quote from Bishop R.C. Blakes, and I love his teaching. He says, when a woman has no emotional control, she is socially and relationally vulnerable. She is compromised by her own emotions. If you don't have control of your emotions, someone else does. When you're out of control, someone else is in control. When you protect your emotions, you own your own personal power and can dictate the atmosphere around you, right? So unregulated emotions and wounds keeps us vulnerable and exposed. We can't come up higher unless we are grounded and centered emotionally. So if my emotions are all over the place and I'm hotmess.com, hotmess.edu, hotmess.org and my emotions, how am I gonna come up higher? How can I be trusted with anything of significance? God will not give you something if it's going to kill you. And if your emotions are out of order and, you know, we need to process our emotions. We need to feel our emotions. I'm not negating, handling and dealing and feeling our emotions. I'm all for that. You listen to me long enough, you will know that that's very true. So I'm not saying we dismiss our emotions, but what I'm saying is we need to definitely master them. We have to master them. We got to be grounded and centered in who we are. We need to be able to identify our feelings. Know what, okay, I'm sad. I'm mad. I'm agitated. I'm angry. I'm anxious. I'm distracted. I'm bored. Identify these emotions. Identify the source, but we don't have to function in them. We don't have to make decisions from, from this place. We definitely have to have some regulation. So let's keep going on here. And I'm reading a little bit from my book, Chapter 3 of A Woman's Journey Home. A lot of times, some, let me, well, let me get here. Yeah, a lot of times, some of the negative emotions and wounds that we carry are not always a result of some deep, dark pain or secret issue that occurred in our past. So a lot of times, you know, you see a lot here on social media, you ain't dealt with your issues. It's your childhood trauma. It's this, that, and the third from in the dark, dark, bad, horrible, horrific trauma. A lot of times, it's that too. Now we got to deal with that. I'm not dismissing that. But a lot of times it's this small stuff that piles up over time. It's a, a slow buildup of negative emotions from our jobs, from day-to-day -day living, from just dealing with people, dealing with ourselves. It's the little things. Let me keep reading here. 
It's the little things. We read in Song of Solomon 2.15 that it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. The daily aggravations and annoyances, the small and petty inconveniences, a word spoken, a post on social media, the way somebody looked at you, feeling slighted or overlooked, the tone of somebody's voice when they said this or that, the list goes on. It's the little things that pile up that get us in trouble. And the irony is, here it is. The busier you become, the more you up level, the more you make a decision. Okay, I'm going to do this. I got my to-do list. I'm going to get these things done. God told me to do this. I'm led to do that. I'm going to do this in my business. I'm going to start this project. I'm going to do this and that. The busier you become, the more likely you're going to carry around a bunch of little negative baggage. A, a bunch of stuff will be in your heart of a bunch of little piled up things. This goes back to chapter one when we talked about emotional house cleaning and it turns into this big heart issue, right? We get we, Now we got a whole big heart issue of this pile up of small clutter, small offenses, small daily irritations and annoyances and aggravations, taking things the wrong way. We get into a lot of judgment, assumption, presumption, and jump into conclusions and vain imaginations. We can put all that in the bag too, right? And the next thing, you know, you got this whole big entire heart issue going on, right? And so if you're not careful to confess, according to 1 John 1, John 1 9, and ask God to clean your heart, you will eventually wind up carrying a huge load of emotional pain and offense in your heart. And you'll wonder how it got there. And so that's like another layer of baggage on top of any other deep existing stuff that you already were carrying. This will be the stuff from childhood. This will be the stuff from the divorce. This would be the stuff from your parents or what happened in a relationship or the things that would happen when you were younger. It could be all of these other daily aggravations and offenses and judgments and jumping to conclusions and vain imaginations and what he said and that social media post and the tone of his or her voice when they said it and how they looked at you and that email they sent. All of that mess on top of what's already there can really create unnecessary clutter in your heart. And you are a human being. You are a human being. And you're going to have those things to pile up and happen to you. But it's on us to own it and to deal with it. Because if we don't, it creates unregulated emotions and it creates chaos in our hearts. It creates pain. And anyone, and see, I, I go back to this point of, of you being a human, we're all being a human. It's because we have to treat ourselves humanely. You know, the, you, you hear about the humane society. Humane treatment is defined as having or showing compassion or benevolence. So you have to treat yourself humanely. In other words, you need to show yourself compassion and benevolence when it comes to your own emotional pain. In order for you to not have unregulated emotions, in order for you to be stable and have emotional mastery, the first step is to treat yourself humanely. That you, yes, I'm a human being. Yes, I have feelings. Yes, I have emotions. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body and I'm gonna treat, but I'm a human, amen? And so I gotta treat myself with kindness and compassion. And this means giving yourself the dignity and respect to honor the fact that as a human being and a child of God, that you have pain, that you deserve to he feel it, heal it, and process it in a healthy way. That means you got to heal it. You got to feel it, identify it, process it, and you need to heal it in a healthy way. And that is how we're going to keep those emotions, emotions regulated and stabilized so that you can ascend to do what God called you to do. But instead, what we do is we gloss over it. We ride over the top of it. We try to perpetrate and fake the funk like we're okay. We numb the pain in our business, our activities, drugs, uh, sex, shopping, social media, relationships, working our business. Instead of feeling my pain, I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to go travel. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to take all these pretty pictures and look really glamorous on Instagram, but my soul is tore up because I just want to make sure I keep up my appearance. Come on. I want to show everybody that I'm okay. Come on. Time out. Time out for faking. Time out. Right? So no more repressing it. No more numbing, hiding, perpetrating, pretending I'm coming straight from my book. 
Woman's Journey Home, chapter three. No more numbing, hiding, perpetrating, pretending, and over-spiritualizing our situation. Be, show yourself some humanity. Show yourself benevolence. Show yourself kindness and compassion and admit that you have the pain there. What you will not express and own is your truth. Your body will break down and pay the price. Oh my God. I know what I'm talking about because my body has gone through changes, right? And anxiety. Anxiety was my thing. I could feel it in my body. What is your thing? Pain is a teacher and an indi indicator. We don't sit in it, but we feel it and walk through it. And when we avoid and repress our pain, we are treating ourselves inhumanely. When you're pretending and faking and fronting like you're okay, you're not treating yourself humanely. We are treating ourselves as less than human and less than a child of God, sometimes without realizing it. There's so much more meat into the, in, this on the, in this chapter. I'm going to stop right here. But I want you to begin the process of acknowledging where you are. Acknowledging where you are before you pick up another project, before you get into another relationship, before you make another big decision to keep yourself preoccupied and caught up and distracted. I want you to sit with this for a minute. Sit with this. Sit with this. This is the, the baseline of really getting real and being healed so that you can come up higher and up level in every area of your life. So we're going to come back here next week with some more nuggets from chapter three, and we're going to keep going to the next level. So stay tuned, stay connected with me, follow this, share this with somebody, tag somebody, uh, put this out here, turn on the notification so that you can catch when I drop the next video. And of course, as always, you can follow along with me in the book and grab your own copy today. Take care and talk to you soon.